sell uh, direct to the consumers uh, at a lot of different farmers market and more than ever today consumers and our buyers want to know what goes on behind our farm gates and uh, we're very upfront about uh, how we treat our cattle and animal welfare is a big part of what we do and what we're interested in. We definitely think there's a correlation between cattle temperament and tenderness in terms of an end product and so we want to give our cattle the best environment that they can possibly have uh, whether that's to uh, give them fresh cold water from our uh, automatic waters every day, uh, good shade so that they're protected from the sun, and we also want to keep them out of the streams and creeks, uh, not only because of uh, protecting them, but also protecting the uh, sustainability of our soil and our water source. So we do a lot of different things on the farm. Many of those are uh, uh, practices that we've learned from our state cost share programs and our NRCS programs to uh, to give a good environment not only for uh, the farm uh, but for the animals as well. When uh, when we started farming in 2003, we knew that uh, you know we wanted to treat the land properly and, and met with our NRCS agent as well as the uh, Fish and Wildlife Department as, and the Forestry Department to really put a plan in place that would give us some guidance as, as new farmers really didn't have a real good feel for what we needed to do and, and how to do it. And uh, a lot of the cost share practices that are available through uh, NRCS as well as our state uh, and here in Kentucky we also have ag development money uh, we were able to uh, put together some uh, some really great environmental practices, uh, best management practices as you would call them, to uh, not only help our cattle in terms of animal welfare, uh, keep them out of the creeks, keep them out of the forest, but also uh, for us to protect the environment and, and, and uh, make it a good uh, place for everybody to live. What we're looking at here is a NRCS practice that uh, we applied for and uh, uh, been accepted at and are just starting the process. This is going to be a crossing uh, across this creek uh, for equipment to be able to take hay out into the pasture in the wintertime to feed our cattle. We started with uh, a geotech fabric after we took off the organic material and uh, put what we call riprap, which is a, a big rock down next and then a smaller rock, uh, about a three inch size rock on top of that to eliminate erosion on the banks as we would go uh, across uh, the stream with our tractors and equipment. Uh, so far the uh, fabric and the rock is put down and uh, they are requiring that a, a concrete apron uh, be put in on both sides which is the next step of this process. That'll be concrete that's about 12 inches deep on the uh, rock side at, uh, tapering down to about two or three inches thick on the uh, creek side. So there'll be uh, one on the side that I'm standing and then another one as we come out of the creek, uh, followed by a gravel, a uh, pathway up to the gate uh, where we'll enter for feeding. Uh, where we're standing now is a uh, animal alleyway, I call it, to uh, allow our animals for, to, to cross the creek uh, to get to a pasture on the other side. Uh, this is a project uh, in progress here. The side that I'm standing on will be, uh, the organic material will be removed and uh, geotech fabric will be placed uh, and then gravel uh, from the gate uh, to my right all the way to the creek. Uh, once we get to the creek on this side, we'll also have a uh, concrete uh, buffer there, a concrete uh, apron uh, to eliminate erosion right at the creek. As we get out the other side, this, this practice uh, does not require uh, gravel from the creek to the fence uh, gate because it will be used fairly infrequently but we will have a concrete apron uh, to get us up to the grassy area on that side.